in this video we'll be looking at the menstrual cycle which includes the uterine cycle as well as the ovarian cycle so the ovarian cycle has got three phases that uh, takes place in it so it's the development of the graafian follicle also known as the follicular phase then ovulation and then formation of the corpus luteum known as the luteal phase but you don't need to know these fancy words to describe those phases you as long as you know what happens um, in this uh, cycle you'll be fine then the events of the uterine cycle is basically the changes that take place in the thickness of the endometrium and then also menstruation please note that menstruation and the menstrual cycle are not the same thing the menstrual cycle is both the uterine cycle and the ovarian cycle whereas menstruation happens just in the uterine cycle and it's basically the shedding of the endometrial lining. Then we'll also look at the hormones that control the menstrual cycle, specifically FSH, estrogen, LH, and then progesterone. And then we'll also look at negative feedback, which is um, specifically with FSH and then progesterone. So the ovarian cycle is everything that happens in the ovary, but this is still important with regards to the uterine cycle, as everything that happens in the ovary can also influence what happens in the uterus, and you'll see in just a bit why that is. So the ovarian cycle basically uh, kicks off with the pituitary gland in the brain that secretes the hormone FSH, so the follicle-stimulating hormone which will stimulate the development of the primary follicle into the uh, graafian follicle. And this uh, happens when the follicle becomes bigger as fluid collects within the follicle and then it keeps on growing unt until we have the mature graafian follicle with the secondary oocyte, uh, which is haploid. So the primary oocyte has undergone uh, meiosis within the follicle as this development has occurred. Then we finally get, um, sorry, I forgot to mention that the graafian follicle is responsible for the secretion of estrogen. And what this does is it, well, helps with the secondary female characteristics uh, starting to appear. And then also with the thickening of the endometrium in the uterus. So this influences uh, the uterine cycle, this hormone released by the graafian follicle. Then we get to ovulation, which is when this mature graafian follicle presses against the wall of the ovary and the follicle continues to grow as the fluid builds up on the inside and the wall of the ovary finally ruptures, releasing uh, the secondary oocyte or the immature ovum. And this is known as ovulation. So this takes place at around day 14 after menstruation has started and ovulation is stimulated by the hormone LH, the luteinizing hormone. So that is also secreted by the pituitary gland. So we have FSH, estrogen and LH being secreted in uh, the ovary. Or, well, not in the ovary, but they, they work in the ovary since these two are secreted by the pituitary gland. This then brings us to the luteal phase, which um, is when the remains of the graafian follicle, so this po portion that stays behind after ovulation, uh, this will develop into the corpus luteum, so this structure over here, with the help of LH. So LH plays a role here once again. Um, and it, it's just the big mass of yellow cells, that pineapple ring structure, um, that starts to develop. So the corpus luteum now actually also plays a role because the corpus luteum will start to secrete the hormone progesterone. And a little estrogen will also be secreted, but both of these hormones play a role in maintaining the endometrial lining for implantation. So basically what that does is it causes the endometrial lining, uh, the tissue to become thicker, and it, it becomes bloody and mucousy so that it can provide nutrition for the developing um, embryo at that stage. So if fertilization does occur, the corpus luteum will maintain the endometrium with those hormones that it secretes until the 12th week of pregnancy. 
but if fertilization does not occur you'll see that that corpus luteum will start to de degenerate and with that uh, these hormones will not be secreted which means that the endometrial lining will also break down but we'll look at that now when we look at the uterine cycle So with regards to the uterine cycle, I've actually given you a graph that contains both the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle. And I've done this because this is actually a graph from a previous exam paper. So if they do ask you the menstrual cycle, they will generally have a graph like this that they'll ask you um, to interpret. So let's look at what is going on here. So this is the ovarian cycle over here. And then this is the uterine cycle down here, which represents uh, the endometrial lining. So let's look at the uterine cycle quickly. So you'll see that it is numbered from day zero up until day 28. Day zero till day seven generally is when menstruation occurs. It can be for four days or it can be six days or seven days, but it generally isn't longer this, than seven days. So this is if fertilization has not occurred. You'll see that the endometrial lining breaks down and menstruation occurs and all of this uh, blood that is built up in the endometrium as well as the mucus and some of the tissue is then shed in the menstrual blood that will leave uh, the cervix and the vagina. If fertilization is successful, you'll see that this endometrial lining will carry on uh, for the nine months it will be as thick as this so this is only a fertilization does not occur you'll see this over here but what I do want to show you is I want to show you that you can write down F O L P so if you remember this word you will remember the hormones that are involved so F is for FSH O is for estrogen L is for LH and P is for, for progesterone. So this is the order in which those hormones will be secreted if you look at this graph. So first let's start with FSH that is secreted during the ovarian cycle. So you'll see up here that FSH and it's secreted by the pituitary gland is an increase in FSH. What will we see then? We will see that there's a, a follicular development. And as this follicle develops and it forms the mature graphian follicle, you will see that there is an increase in the hormone estrogen. Why? Because estrogen is secreted by the graphian follicle. And as soon as estrogen is secreted, look down here, you'll see that the endometrium starts to become thicker again. Why? Because estrogen helps maintain the thickness of the endometrium. So you see how all of those are working together. Then day 14 is when ovulation generally occurs. So looking at this, you'll see that LH, the L, uh, there's a spike in LH which will cause ovulation. So in the ovarian cycle, ovulation to occur and uh, the endometrial lining will just keep on being maintained because of the estrogen that is still being secreted. Then as, the, as the, the egg cell then travels down the fallopian tube, you'll see that the leftovers of the graphene follicle will turn into the corpus luteum because of the LH that has been secreted. So the corpus luteum will then take over the role um, of secreting a little bit of estrogen, but the main hormone that is secreted here is progesterone, and you'll see that there's a spike in there, and the uterine cycle we will see that the endometrial lining is still being maintained so that is it in a nutshell now once again if um, implantation is successful so if fertilization has occurred and uh, the blastocyst is implanted into the the endometrial lining you'll see that this is maintained for the rest of the pregnancy um, and then the corpus luteum will secrete progesterone for 12 weeks where after it will deteriorate. But if fertilization did not occur, so there was no um, implantation of uh, the zygote or the fertilized egg cell, you'll see that after day 28, we'll start again at day zero, 
which is menstruation. So this endometrial lining is shed, so the tissue, the blood, and the mucus with the unfertilized egg cell will then be shed and exits through the cervix and the vagina. And that is the process of menstruation then. So I think that is the basics of it. It's really not that hard. And um, I think let's quickly look at the hormonal control of menstruation. We've already basically done this. I just quickly want to do a quick recap of it. So the pituitary gland secretes the hormone FSH. So there we have FSH. And that will stimulate uh, the development of the primary follicle into the graphene follicle. Now the developing follicle secretes estrogen and this will maintain the endometrial lining. So you'll see a spike in estrogen. We've got the endometrial lining and this will also um, inhibit the secretion of FSH. So as soon as estrogen is being produced, FSH will be inhibited. What does that mean? It means that estrogen will stop FSH from being secreted. Why? Because we don't want another follicle uh, being released or developed while we have a possible um, egg that can be, uh, well, an egg that can possibly be fertilized already out because we don't want two pregnancies here. So estrogen inhibits the release of FSH. Now the high levels of estrogen that we see here after day 14 will stimulate the pituitary gland to release LH, uh, the luteinizing hormone. So what this will do is that the luteinizing hormone will stimulate the process of ovulation and the luteinizing hormone will also transform the ruptured follicle into the corpus luteum. Now remember the FSH also causes the graphene follicle um, to grow more and it triggers ovulation just to have that clear. Now the corpus luteum will then produce progesterone and small amounts of estrogen. You'll see that estrogen is still being secreted down here. And progesterone will once again also inhibit FSH because we don't want another follicle being produced. And it will also inhibit the secretion of LH. Because if this failed and there was another follicle, we don't want that follicle um, to also go through the process of ovulation, releasing the immature ovum. So uh, progesterone will inhibit FSH and LH. Now the endometrium is very thick after day 14, as you can see here, because of the secretion of progesterone and estrogen. And like I said, if fertilization does not occur, that uh, corpus luteum will degenerate after 24 days basically, and then progesterone and estrogen will re uh, release will also stop because the corpus luteum has disappeared, which means that the endometrium will be shed during menstruation and because progesterone is no longer inhibiting FSH, FSH will be released, which means we start over with a new primary follicle developing into the graphene follicle. So we've basically already touched on negative feedback, but I just like to do that again so that you have a clear understanding. So looking at negative feedback and what that is. So negative feedback is an increase in the level of one hormone that will result in the decrease or the complete inhibition of the other. So one hormone stops the secretion of another. So with regards to negative feedback, we need to no look at negative feedback um, with FSH and progesterone. But to understand that, we first need to look at estrogen. So with an increased uh, production of estrogen by the graphene follicle, it will inhibit, so it, it will inhibit the release of FSH by the pituitary gland. So there will be a decrease in the secretion of FSH. And this just pre uh, prevents the development of further follicles in the ovary because we don't want other follicles being released. Now, with that, we will also see that there are increased levels of progesterone as soon as the corpus luteum comes into being. So that will then also inhibit FSH as well as LH. They will both be inhibited by the uh, secretion of progesterone. And this prevents the development once again of any other follicles as well as ovulation, which LH is also responsible for.
So once the corpus luteum degenerates, estrogen and progesterone levels will decrease. So both estrogen and progesterone will decrease, which means that we will see secretion of FSH once again. And that is negative feedback. So it's, it's fairly straightforward. 